What is happening, guys? It's Saturday, and we are at the Hack and Pack Shop. I don't even want to get out of this truck, man. It is freaking cold out. It's like, I don't know, four degrees maybe right now. It's freaking cold. Welcome to New York. All right. We've got a little stuff going on today. We're going to do a little how-to rust video for you. Oh, yeah, we got some snow. I don't know. They said roughly about a foot here, about 20 inches here and there and everywhere. Um... I'm going to be doing a series on this car for you, too. It's a 09 Forester. It uh, had a little run-in with a deer. Yeah, got doors coming. I was actually supposed to pick them up yesterday, but the storm got me all screwed up with plowing. God, I spent, I don't know, probably 25, 30 hours in a truck in a couple days, which isn't too bad. Could be worse. All right. Got the freaking heat on. It's been going here for a couple hours. Hopefully it'll be like at least 40. Son of a bitch. We're going to do a little how-to video on this Focus. Yeah, look how cold it is. This car has been in here all night. Still got the same snow on it that it did yesterday. What is it in here? He's been going for a while, too. Ugh. Son of a bitch. Right, let me uh, freaking look at this. Look at this place, guys. It is trashed. It's been like this crazy freaking just spurt all of a sudden out of nowhere. Just bam, ton of work. I need to get this place cleaned. This is one of mine here. Oh yeah, I gotta finish it up and get it the hell out of here. So anyway, I don't even know what year it is. Does it really matter? It's a Focus. All right, and it's yellow, and it's got. Rust. Oh yeah. Some bitchin' rust. I need a cleaning lady. Alright. Little random comment for you there. A little dark over here. Let's see here. Plug in a light. You guys that are kind of new to the channel, this here is the uh, wall of fame and shame. A lot of you uh, subscribers mailed all this stuff into me from all over the world. Oh yeah. This is all from you guys. The only donations I really put on this wall? Um, what the hell did I put on this wall? I think this license plate, but it's just here because I know where it is so I can put them on cars that sit outside so I don't get in trouble. Oh yeah, that Mustang piece is mine. This came off a uh, I think a Ram, like 05 Ram. Look at that. That's off of Corvair Wilds. It's a bourbon. And the door's open. Son of a bitch. Any of you guys recognize this shit? Oh, did I just swear? Son of a bitch. Look at doors open. Brought up in a freaking barn or what? Freaking cold out. Alright. So we're going to work on some rust. I haven't even really looked at this thing. I just pulled it in. A little bit probably on the inside of the doors, but I got some... I really doubt I'm really going to do anything with that. Because this is like literally a $200 job. So it's basically just kind of do the outside real quick and call it done. The outside on both sides. Yeah. So first thing we're going to do... Oh, where is this car from out of state? Oh yeah, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, son of a bitch. PA inspection, New York registration. This was a trade-in at the car lot. Oh yeah. Okay, we're not fixing anything on the inside. Son of a bitch. All right, let me move this heater. Look at this. Freaking heater's right here, look at the snow. It's cold, guys. This heater ran all day yesterday. And it was like freaking, I think the high in here was 41. And I'm working at like 8.30 last night. And then it's 40. And then 9.30. It was like 37. The, heat, the, the temperature is actually dropping as it got colder outside in here. With the heat going. Wow, this thing got like a little damage here too. Got a little something something there. We probably ain't going to fix that though. Maybe I'll just pop it out take care of that. This is all just scab. No holes. 
I'm just gonna run the grinder over it. Wow, it's freaking froze over here. Son of a bitch. All right, first thing we gotta do. Because this job's gonna look literally, I'm spending two hours on it, maybe three. Paint code. Can we read it? That's where the paint coat is on a Ford. External paint. B is in boy. Seven. That's where your paint coat usually is on a Ford. Summer's around a driver door, driver door jam. EXT PNT. That means exterior paint. So, grab the cell phone. Uh, hit that number. Hit this number. Right here. Three, three, one, eight, eight. Oh shit, no, that's the wrong number. It's uh, 3083. Napa. Speaker. Can't even hear it. There we go. Hey, Dave, Sean Piscotti Con, how are you? Right. Hey, you need to order a little bit of paint. It's uh, going to be in a 2004 Ford Focus. Uh, Got to look it back up because I already forgot that son of a bitch. It's uh, B is in boy seven. It's a bright yellow. Yellow. Yes, sir. Uh, one pint a base. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right. See ya. Bye. All right. Simple as one, two, three. First, you order the paint because you gotta have paint. And I don't, I don't have this yellow. All right. So, I mean, really, this son of a bitch isn't dry enough to work on on this side yet. So we're gonna start on this side. This place is trashed. I'm embarrassed. So we're gonna pick it up on the left. Then we're gonna get out the little freaking angle grinder. And we're gonna start grinding shit. All right. Angle grinder. I don't know what grit that is. Like, it might even be like 80 or 60 on there. I don't know. 50, so it is 50. Oh yeah, you like that? It's so cold in here, the freaking water from the compressor, the moisture, freezes up the stinking line in the tool. Look at that. And that's even if you drain the compressor. Watch this shit. Oh wait, you know what? Maybe it'll help if I turn it on. It is on. Never mind. Some bitch. Watch this shit. See how slow it is? Put a little heat on it. Just a minute. Do, 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 do. Get in there. A little more heat. It's getting pretty hot. Man, nuts. Look at that. It's that cold.
that tan stuff? That's not Bondo, that's factory uh, chip guard. froze up again. Alright, let me get this ground. We'll uh, continue on. Alright, now that's all ground down. So what I usually do next, grab a DA with some 80 on it. Then just kind of feather it out. bit of stubborn rust right there. as much bare metal as possible. Here we have some pretty severe pits. This is actually through um, the first layer of steel. This is actually the inner door. Okay. But we're just gonna we're just gonna mud right over it with some dura glass. And a couple minor ones there. Alright but like I said I'm not gonna go too crazy on this thing. Alright it's a two hundred dollar job. So, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna bring the heater over here and I'm going to run some good heat on this for a few minutes and get it really nice and warm. Hopefully that's going to draw some of the moisture out of it. I mean, because this car, it's got water running out of it everywhere. All right, but I don't feel like being here all day waiting for water to stop running. I did take the air hose and blow a lot of it out, but... So I'm going to take the heater and I'm going to put it aiming on this door and fender area, okay? And just hopefully it'll start sucking that moisture out. I mean, because to touch this, it feels like this panel is 30 degrees. All right, you go ahead and put uh, body filler on it. It's never going to dry, and the body filler is actually going to suck the moisture out of the steel into the body filler, and this thing will be bubbling in three days. So you want to try to get this as dry as possible. All right, so let me uh, bring the heater over here, and then we'll continue on. Well, you shut this thing off. There we go. Now that this is finally dried out, so what I'm going to do, I just have this stuff laying around, some Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer, okay? I'm just going to spray a little bit of this over this pitted area. Um, I think it does help a little bit. I don't think it's like really, really effective, but I, I think it's better than nothing. All right, so I'm just going to shoot a little bit of this. Let's see if it works here. I'm just going to shoot a little bit of this over the top of it. Not a lot, just kind of a little bit.
And then so what we're going to do is let this stuff dry. And then I'm just going to go right over the top of it with Duraglass. Something like that. It will, it will, I think it will help it a little. It's better than just putting um, body filler right over the pits themselves, okay? Um, I mean, you could try it. It might work for you, it might not. I do believe, though, that it does help a little bit. Let's see how warm it is in here. Forty-one! Heat wave! That's why I got it. That's what's nice about that heater I got. You can actually point and shoot. You put heat where you want it. I did get in the back side of this fender a little bit here, right through the inner uh, wheel well, and push most of this dent out. I knocked this one in. This was an Audi. I'm just going to knock this in a little bit, grind this down. And uh, I'm just going to put a little layer of body filler over here just to kind of smooth it all over just a little bit. I'm not going to get too fancy with it. Like I said, it's a $200 job. All right? I mean, really, I should have got $250 just to do one side. I'm doing both for $200. Bucks. It's a dealer car. So not really fussy. Just make them look better and ship them. All right, so let's let that rust reformer dry, and we'll put a little Duraglass on. All right, I have a little uh, Duraglass here. This is the hardener, the blue stuff. So what we're going to do, we're just going to kind of mix it all together. You like my little uh, ghetto setup here so I don't have to hold this board? Looks like I still might have to hold it a little bit. You know, I got like four tripods. You think I could find a one of them? So you can see all the streaks in it. You don't want to see any of that. You want a whole uniform color change. You still see the streaks in it when you're mixing it? Keep mixing it. No streaks, or it won't dry properly at all. You're just going to have a mess on your hands. And this Duraglass is waterproof. Actually, this is called fiber strand. It's like Duraglass. Real fine uh, hair strands in it, supposedly. I, I don't see a one strand, but they say they're, they're in there. Scrape that board right clean. Keep flip-flopping it over. Wipe the spreader clean. Flop it over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a real thin coat on here. Don't need a lot, only where these major, major pits are. Remember earlier I told you that you could see into the inner uh, door layer? So that's where we got to kind of concentrate. If you look here, you can see a divot. That's a low spot. That's where the major... Uh, issue is with this door. And the reason why I feather edged all this is because I knew darn well that my body filler was going to overlap into some paint. So you want to make sure this stuff sticks. Very important. Otherwise when you go to sand it, it's uh, just going to kind of flake off. Right here, it's not really necessary to put anything, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just a little layer here. This really wasn't pitted. But I'm just doing it to do it. that dry and then we're gonna open it up with some 80 grit on the DA and sand her down. Let's go to Napa. Look at that salt. Salt makes rust. Salt bitch. My truck needs to be cleaned out. Let's go get our paint. Subaru. At least the roads are starting to clear up. It was kind of nastier for a couple days. It don't really bother me, but a lot of people were bitching about it. Which I guess if you're driving a little car with bald tires or something like that, I guess it would make a um, little treacherous driving. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Yeah, that's a twin of the one I got in the shop. At 
least I'm all caught up with my plowing for a minute. Until the next time. They're calling for some, uh, I don't know, rain, sleet, snow, all sorts of crap tomorrow. Who knows? Sun's out now, though. It's one thing I do give them, boy. They get these roads pretty good in a minute. They do do a good job of taking care of the roads, so. Yeah, we get the Napa, we'll fire us back up, maybe. Yesterday, I put a little picture on Facebook of a little scrape I got on my truck plowing. Right here's the building. Right there. I get right up on them sidewalks, plow them sidewalks. Yep, I sure do. Plow in between. And then I plow on the other side of the building, too. I usually do it at 5 in the morning because of the traffic, because you're doing a bunch of illegal turns and shit. Now well, people are horny. Beep, beep. Oh, all right, here's a Napa. Go for some coffee. Maybe we'll stop at Vicky's for coffee real quick. Put this window down a little bit. This truck locked me out of it the other day. It's kind of grumpy about that. Come on, Steve. Good. I didn't even realize the camera was on, son of a bitch. Alright, just got some chip guard and some freaking paint. Is it gonna focus? Oh hell no. There we go. $50.72 for a pint of yellow, zinc yellow, and chip guard. And I had to include probably the other 30 bucks worth of materials we're putting on it. So I'm making money on this job? Not really. But you know how I look at it? It's better than doing nothing. Better than sitting at home watching TV. You know? Alright, I think we're going to go to Vicky's. Gotta get some coffee. It looks like the coffee crew's here. Victorious treats. So much freaking glare and crap on the window you can't even see. Sorry about that. Have a Coke and a smile. Son of a bitch. Get some damn coffees. I need energy. I haven't been sleeping at all lately. <clears throat> What's doing, Ma? Not a hell of a lot. Oh boy. It's Vicky, what are we making? Really? I look like dog ass in your recording today. Yeah, it's alright. What is so, cranberry pomegranate? That's cranberry juice. I don't see any cheesecake. Cheesecakes in the there. In the what? Is it for me? Nope. What? Here. Cookie tray. Don't look at my dirty refrigerator. Cookie tray. Cheesecake. Do not touch. I will break it to you. What? Don't hurt oh, yourself you're... now. Yeah, I'm threatened. I'm gonna go sit over here. See how I got my coffee, guys? You ever bring me coffee sweet and light? That's how I like my women, too. Sweet and light. Some bitch. Alright, back from Napa. Now we're going to sand down our mud. 80 grit on the DA. One key thing is hold it flat. Not up on its edge, only unless you're trying to get into a divot, but always try to hold it flat.
like that, you want to be able to run your finger or your hand over this and not feel anything. You don't want to feel any transition between paint to primer to bare steel to body filler. Now this little area right here is almost ready for primer other than going over it with some finer grit sandpaper. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of all these spots because there's no sense in you watching me do the same thing for hours and hours here. Alright, trying to make this video, well, huh, it's probably going to be an hour long so that means about four hours worth of uploading. So I just want to speed this up here and uh, get the ball rolling on this puppy. Alright, we're we'll turning back on Charlie. Alright, I got a little carried away off camera, guys, but I can't hold the camera and tape at the same time, unfortunately, because I need both of my hands. But as what I did, if you look in here, maybe you can see it. Can you see the green tape in there? Alright, there really is green tape in there. So what I did is I run a tape line inside of the door jam, so all the paint, chip guard, primer won't blow up into the inner rocker panel and then just look like crap. Then this is what I did, is I took the DA, of course you guys watched me feather edge all this out, uh, with 80 grit and I took 180 and feather edged it all more so it's smooth you can't feel a thing here all right it feels the same here as it does right here that's what you want you don't want to feel anything now what I'm going to do is take a scotch bright and I'm going to scotch bright all this area I'm going to scotch right up into here a little bit from here all the way down around and then up into here I took some uh, Wesley's bleach white the tire cleaner and cleaned it all up pretty good. And so what I'm going to do is scotch bright it, and then what I'll do is I'll go back over it with uh, with some cleaner, uh, and then we're going to prime it. Okay. After we prime it, <clears throat> we're going to put some chip guard on it, and then of course we're going to paint it. So when you're scotch brighting, I don't know the light in here is just kind of funky, so we got to get a good reflection here somewhere. There we go. There's a good light reflection. What you want to do is get this doll. You really don't want to see, I mean, you're going to see a little bit of light reflection, but you don't want a whole lot. And that's what I did is I went right with a body line here, if you see up. Okay, I just kind of carried it with a tape. But you want to get this stuff nice and dull. Because if it's not dull and it's still shiny and you put paint over it, shit's going to peel off. Your paint will peel off within probably a month, month and a half, if you don't prepare this area good wherever you're painting or blending. Kind of firm pressure, firm medium pressure. I use red scotch brights a lot, you can use gray. I don't know, I'm just, I've had good luck with a red so I just stick with it. That's basically what you want to do, is scotch ray all this area that you plan on putting paint in clear coat and where you plan on blending your clear coat into the existing car finish. Okay, so let me get this done. And then we'll uh, go ahead and throw a little primer on this stuff. Alright, let's put a little primer on this puppy. I just got some of that old school red acrylic primer. I got it mixed kind of thick too. If you mix it good and thick, it hides shit. It buries in little imperfections in your body work. It just takes a little longer for it to dry. There you go. I'll go over it with another coat in a couple minutes, and then we'll uh, give it a real light sand, do some chip guard, and paint this song, bitch. All right, now that our primer's dry enough, we're just gonna sand it. I've got a piece of DA paper, um, folded in half, it's 320 grit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda hold it like that. We're just gonna feather this out. I'm not going to go really crazy sanding this down perfect because this is the lower portion of the car and again we're only getting paid $200. This was the top of a fender or a hood. It'd be a little bit different but it's not. Alright so something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it down. A little bit back here. You should be able to feel in the primer too if it's not sanded enough. Like here, I can feel where it's a little bit rougher. All right, just kind of want to hit that. Something like that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it down. Just going to wipe it clean. I'm actually going to spray a little bit of aerosol glass cleaner on a rag and just wipe it clean. Okay, I'm going to blow it off first. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do the chip guard. I'll show you how to do that. Alrighty. You see here I run a tape line. Alright, if you follow that tape line, you'll see right there there's a lip. That's the factory chip guard. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to blend new chip guard into factory chip guard. And it's easy as one, two, three. Shake the shit up. I'm holding the can back about a foot. And just kind of like that. That's it. Simple as one, two, sound bitch. I'll just give it another little squirt. And that's it. I mean, you could carry it all the way back if you cared on this car. I really don't care. Then just peel the tape. When you're peeling the tape, try to pull up and out. It'll leave a nice line. And that's what you want for this sound bitch. Alright, then you just let it dry about 15 minutes and paint right over it. Easy. Alright, all the time I got people piss or how you mix paint. You know what? I wing it. Not much thinner in a gun. It's alright. Pour the shit in. Not about that much. There you go. Take a stir stick, stir it up. It all depends on how thick you want your paint. Like some of these colors are more transparent than others, so you just gotta kinda wing it. It's kinda cold out. Well, it's kinda cold in here. And I don't feel like waiting for paint to dry for three days. So I'm mixing it kinda thick. Probably three coats will be done. I don't know on this yellow though. So, what the hell do I do with the lid to this some bitch? Yeah, here we go. So, a little thinner in the gun. Yeah, you heard me right. Thinner. For this cheap paint, you can mix it with thinner. Guys are like, oh, you gotta use a reducer. You know what? I've been using this paint system for over 10 years. I haven't had a problem yet. Alright, let me find my arrows. Some bitch. Where the hell is the end of that? Uh, this way. All right, one thing you want to do too, especially with especially with yellow, cover anything you do not want overspray on. Because let me tell you what, yellow overspray is just, it's terrible. It's like the worst color. How much air pressure? I don't know, the gauge don't work. Looks like maybe fitty. Fitty or city. All right. So yeah, you can see that line really good for the chip guard. That's what you want. One coat. Yeah, we need more. Not yet. Easy. It's cold out, so you don't want to pound this stuff on either. If you pound this paint on, shit's gonna run. And you're gonna make more work for yourself. Just like that. Let it set. Add at least two more coats. Call me in the morning. One thing I've learned when painting, and most body guys or painters know it, you wanna use as little material as possible. Especially if you own your own place, cause shit ain't cheap, cause. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously when you've seen me spraying it, I kept the paint only where I need it. And I'm going to continue to do so. Okay? I'm just going to keep spraying to hide my body work. Okay? And then that's what I'll do is I'll blend it out a little bit and I'll show you how to do that in our next little clip of this video. Okay? But I'm going to concentrate next couple coats on just putting that color 
over my primer. You don't need colorway up here. You don't need it. There's already color there. No sense to put more color there. Concentrate on where you need it, okay? Don't run a tape line and paint little squares. That don't work either. You want to blend, all right? Trust me, this works, okay? I'll turn you back on in a second. So we got a total of three coats of color on this thing. All right, now that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna kind of blend everything and fuzz everything in. If you run a, a hard tape line, and if this color don't match, you're gonna see it, okay? Like if I only painted the door and didn't blend into any of this over here, you, uh, you might see a color change. The reason why I'm doing it this way, in case this paint don't match, it's gonna blend in and you're not gonna see the color difference. So now I'm just gonna kinda go over the whole area. Kinda blending it up and in. Getting up toward that molding a little bit. Oh yeah, I'm painting right next to the heater. I don't care. Son of a bitch and bone. Just like that. Clear coat's next. Alright, clear coat time. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Oh, there we go. Clear coat. Four parts plus one part. I. Alright. So basically, four parts to one part. There's about four parts. Activator. Yeah, it's probably a part. That's how I roll. Mm-hmm. Find my damn lid. There we go. Four parts. One part. Pretty easy. Okay, with a clear coat. They say start up. Work your way down. All right. Does it really matter? Come on. Like really? Just like that. I'm not getting way up into my blend area yet. Either way, just got a good even coat. All right, half even coat. All right, I got a lot of set. All right, if you can touch the tape, and it's sticky, ready for another coat. All right, I guess I'll start with top, work my way down this time. Going about two feet, turning around, coming back. And what we're going to do is we're going to overlap about six inches. See, with these lighter colors, it's hard to tell what you're doing, too. So you just kind of, kind of guess and hope you don't get a run. I'm still staying out, way out of this area. You don't need to put clear up there. There's no color up there. We're just going to put a little um, blender in there. That's easy. One, two, three, two coats. All right, let us sit a minute, and we'll come back to it. All right, to blend your area, it's pretty easy. If you look, well, you're probably not gonna really be able to see it, but I have my clear coat, factory clear coat, somewhere. There's gonna be a faint line, and it's hard to follow. Right there, it's fuzzy. That's all I'm gonna do, put some thinner, just, that's it. Just blend it in. That's all you got to do. If you want it to look perfect, what you're going to want to do, wait a couple days, weather permitting, and uh, wet sand your little blend areas with 2000, real light, just scuff them up, and go ahead and go over it with a buffer. All right? I hope you guys enjoyed our little half-ass how to do some uh, rust video. 
Y'all have a goody-goody. Thanks for watching. Later, guys.